<laughs> Hello, Guy Wolf here. I have this uh, sort of in on the wheel so you can actually see what I'm doing. My um, Shimpo Whisper seems to be getting a little bit of a, of a not whispering anymore, but it's, I love this wheel. Uh, I'm going to just make you a, a simple flower pot so you can see uh, the method of pulling up a wall. This is six pounds of clay, which is sort of a smaller piece. Uh, later on, I'll throw you something bigger just for the fun of it. But, uh, heck, I guess I'll do that now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a 12-pounder. So here we got six. And here's another six. I want to make sure that's nice and dry. The two main things that happen on the wheel, well, uh, I should simplify this. The two main things that happen with clay is motion and compression. And the reason the Japanese talk about um, wedging as being so important for learning about pottery is that both motion and compression are happening. When you're wedging, you're pushing, which is moving the clay, and as you're bringing it in on itself, you're compressing. So um, the student is usually very good at motion, and they're not very good at compression. So I'm going to start by making the bottom of this, which is uh, I'm pulling, the, you know, basically I'm cutting out the base of this, which. 10 years ago I wouldn't have done, but it's, it's a very fast method for getting the floor of the pot there. Very importantly, the floor of the pot wants to be compressed. That's what, when, you're, when the pot's drying, what, what keeps it from cracking. Cracking. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use my left hand for the first uh, move, which is just Bring the clay under control and getting it uh, sort of up and into place. Now, as I said on the last video, the, the, let me get this out of the way. The more of a indentation you make, the more material you're going to be picking up. And the, my hand is pushing out way up here. So the further apart your hands, the more space there is for the actual material to move. Um, this is a really important thing to say to a student because uh, you go into a classroom and you find people sitting there trying to move a piece of clay and it's not going anywhere because they're not actually grabbing on to anything. I'm going to do a piece that um, the wonderful staff at Monticello uh, Thomas Jefferson's house uh, let me look at their shards years ago. And this is uh, the late Georgian era. There are a lot of pots with a double rim. And this is one of those. Okay. As I've said before, the rib is to the potter what the uh, violin bow is for a fiddle player. It amplifies the command you're giving, the architectural command that you're giving the piece of clay. So I'm going to grab the bottom here. And a lot of people think you're just scraping, but in fact, you're really moving material around, but, but in a, a larger, larger area of moving. Um, in other words, there's a, a larger surface of area that, where the clay's getting moved around. Um, there are three main commands that you're giving when you're on the wheel. One is to make an arch, the second is to make a straight, and the third is to make a dome. And when you're making a flower pot, you're doing a pretty simple straight line, but these pots are going to be stacked inside each other in the kill. So what I'm doing is I'm just doing a little bit of a, an arch at the bottom with a slight doming in the middle that then springs to an arch at the end. Now, a lot of this isn't showing in the wall, 
but it's uh, it's there in the strength of the piece, and it also shows the same way people get sort of excited about you know a, a really good Dorian uh, uh, pillar, and you know like, uh, well, or when you go look at the Parthenons, you see, you don't see a straight line. It's a has that wonderful motion to it. Uh, a powerful motion in a line gives extra strength. So, now this putt, you see in a lot of the early Virginian putts, just a simple little pressing in. Very simple. I'm going to slow it down a little because you want a little tighter one in the upper rim. So this is uh, related to and inspired by shards that I've seen coming from Thomas Jefferson's house. I did a video a little while ago and everything, the proportions were all wrong, so I'm really hoping that I don't have this set in the wrong, in the wrong way. It'll be sort of a, as we say in the 60s, a bummer it's not set properly. Okay, so because this pot is not from Thomas Jefferson's house, I'm going to put my name on it. If I make a pot here in my own shop, it just, just says G. Wolf. If I make a pot and then I, um, you know, train somebody to make that in one of the other shops that I've uh, worked with, then it will say G. Wolf and Company. So this one just says a simple G. Wolf on it. Uh, meaning that it was made by me here in Bantam. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a little little decoration on the side of the thing. So the pot's going to be cut under. Uh, this part I'd like to thank the wonderful potters I went to visit. Uh, Smith and Hawkins sent me off to visit some wonderful potters in Portugal a few years back, and I have to tell you, it was the most wonderful educational visit for me. Um, I'm putting little supports inside this pot so that it'll be able to pick it up. And I need one that's just a little bit larger than the one I have down there, a little bit smaller than the one I've just put in. So, what is this going to do? That's, no. So I, I, I don't have a support in place, I really want one, and this is a 12 pounder, so this may get a little ugly here. Not too bad. I have some dents that I'm going to fix, but they're not, they're not so bad. This is, being a 12 pounder, this uh, pot sells it for a lot of money. Um, gosh, I'm not even sure what it sells for. Out of my shop, if you walked in the door here, this would sell for $65. Another important thing to say is that clay really does have a memory. So if, you, if you're pretty polite to it, it will go along for the ride. This is uh, the last thing I'm going to do. I'm going to take a tool here and just um, cut some extra... Uh, drainage holes and here we have a pot taken from uh, inspired by Thomas Jefferson's garden at Monticello <laughs>